Hey, Adam, Jeez, why, why do you think they called bumper scary? <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> they come at the beginning, at the end, like bumpers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Alex, you're a marketing guy. Do you like that design behind Paul? Does that, that sweet logo thing look pretty cool <laughs> to you? <laughs> hey, I forgot to hit the record button. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's, that's really professional, isn't it? <laughs> it? Well, this is a professional podcast. <laughs> I met her in a parking lot and was handed two little Yorkies. And the only person I knew that knew Yorkies was Paul. So I called Paul. <laughs> <and> said, Paul. <laughs> Sweet Talk is a weekly 20-minute podcast brought to you by the Continuing Education and Workforce Training Division of Idaho State University's College of Technology. Find us on Apple Podcast, Spotify, and SoundCloud, and subscribe today. Now, it's time to get started with Sweet Talk. Good morning, and uh, welcome to Sweet Talk, ISU's Continuing Education and Workforce Training's weekly podcast. Um, as many of you and our traditional listeners may recognize the face you see before you on the screen. Um, my coworkers are out in meeting, so it, you'll just be stuck with me and our guest, but you will love her uh, very, very much. You may recognize her from last year. Um, today, we have a special guest with us joining us pre-holiday season, working up to the holiday season. So today, we're going to be talking about Benny's Pantry. So I'm going to turn over to my guest for a moment to introduce herself and tell us a little bit about what she does at Benny's. Hey, thank you so much. Um, so my name is Lisa Crawford, and I'm the director of Benny's Pantry. And we are very excited this year. Things are rolling uh, much smoother than they were last year. I was new to the position last July. Um, so we have started the rescue program, and we're getting donations from the food bank this year. And then um, we also have some other things that we're looking forward to bringing to our shelves as well to just help us keep more variety and more options available. Um, we also have a generous donor who's helping us make sure that we can keep dairy and fresh produce in the in the pantry. So those are the exciting new things for this year. Well, I'm very, very glad to hear that you're rolling with some new programs. Would you like to take a moment to talk about your new programs before we get into um, what Benny's generally does throughout the year? Sure. So our biggest um, addition is our food rescue program. And through that, we're able to pick up food once a week from both Smith's and Fred Meyer. And they provide us with bakery items, bread, donuts, um, anything that you would find at the, the bakery section there in the store. And then also a variety of frozen meats and non-meat options. So um, those have been great staples to help more variety on the shelves. Yeah. Well, I'm very, very glad to hear that. I really don't like uh, food waste in grocery stores, so I'm so glad that they are donating it to Benny's Pantry. And for those who don't know, what is Benny's Pantry? So Benny's Pantry is a free re resource for ISU students, staff, and faculty. It's like a little grocery store. It's located downstairs in the sub building. Um, you'll see the game center, the bowling alley. We're just behind the pool tables. And um, we are currently this season, we're open uh, for a few hours every weekday. Um, and students or faculty or staff can just bring their Bengal ID card. They swipe it when they come in. And then they can go in and pick whatever items um, would be helpful for them. And then we just have them weigh it and do a quick survey um, on their way out. And they're ready to go. Now... Uh, I think it's such a great resource to have a food pantry here on campus, I issue. Does Benny's have anything non-food related, such as hygiene items? We do try to keep a variety of hygiene items. Um, that's something that we struggle a little more getting in, but we have had a group who's agreed to do a hygiene drive for us this year, so that might that will help us um, get things stocked up in the next month or so. We usually keep toothbrushes, toothpaste, um, laundry detergent, um, just some of the basic items. And then we also have baby items available like formula, mm -hmm. diapers, and some baby food options. That is fantastic. For those who might be outside of the area, 
We have a really unique demographic of students at Idaho State University. Uh, many people in our area get married and have families very young. We also have quite a bit of returning students who are non-traditional students who come in to our university. So having baby items is a fantastic resource, not only for the faculty and staff who might be a little bit older in their marriage and kids, but also for students who many of whom do have young families as well. So we're coming up into the holiday season. Uh, what does that look like for Benny's Pantry? We are um, hoping to just keep an extra variety of things, some, some fun holiday items. In the past, we have put together holiday boxes and students could fill out a survey um, to let us know what they wanted. However, I would say more than half of the boxes did not get picked up last year. Um, so then we had all these holiday items left over that didn't get utilized. So this year, we're just going to try to keep them on the shelves. Um, and we have recently increased our visit limit to now um, patrons can come once a week instead of twice a month. Um, so hopefully that will help them be able to come in as we get different items and give everybody a fair chance to enjoy those things. Well, you know, I can maybe see that students might get last minute offers to go to a Thanksgiving dinner somewhere. So that's okay. very, very bright to to just keep those um, items on the shelf. What are your biggest needs for Benny's Pantry going into the holiday season and throughout the semester? So our biggest needs, um, I would say, especially for the holidays, are just things that 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 you would enjoy having at the holidays um extra those extra things like um pies or pie fillings um baking this basic baking goods like flour sugar vanilla um the things that you would normally use to create the extra special things for your family are the same things that our students are looking for um, and hoping to enjoy um, I will say we have more green beans than we will probably ever use, um, but everything else, cranberry sauce, yams, sweet potatoes, um, those kind of things were, were really enjoyed last year. And we got a lot of feedback that students liked having those seasonal items available that we don't normally have on the shelves. Now, do you see a difference in what you would consider like students eating versus like a regular family is are there items that people might donate to a food bank that uh, a traditional food bank that you may need something a little bit different because you are uh, seeing students such as like for example freezer meals or or quick tv dinners that people may not donate to the regular food bank Yes, those are always great. Um, I think I think it's pretty easy to understand that students don't have a lot of free time. While we want to supply them with the most nutritious food available, our first thought is just to get them food because it's very hard to make time to um, eat, let alone to go home and cook a full meal and grocery shop for a full meal when you're going to school and most students are working on top of that. A lot of students have families on top of that. So those quick fixes um, are really great staples too. We do have two freezers now, so uh, we definitely welcome getting any kind of convenience items like those microwavable meals um, or, or those kind of items as well. That's really great to hear. I think last time we spoke to you, you just had the one freezer. So it's really, really nice that you guys um, got a second. Now, speaking a little bit differently, shifting this focus a bit more to the economy, everything has gone up, like the cost of groceries, rent. Like, have you seen an increase in the need for Benny's Pantry since we last spoke to you? Absolutely. Um, we are now giving out over a thousand pounds of food more per month than we were the last time we, did, we were talking to you. Um, we're growing by about 30 new patrons a month. So we have a lot more traffic. Uh, it's, it's really picking up. And like you said, prices are just skyrocketing. Rent alone has almost doubled in a lot of places here in Pocatello since last year. Um, and then the cost of food, I think we've all felt that strain when you go and you get two bags where you used to get a cart full of groceries. 
Um, and, and, and I know, I think I shared a little bit last year, but I know that as a student, the only thing left I had to sacrifice from was food. Um, you know, I still had to pay my rent. I had to have a place to live. That was the only little bit of income that I still had left. So that's often what we didn't have was food. Um, so, so these donations that come in, they are truly golden. They are helping people be able to see their educational process through so that they can better their lives and um, better the lives for their families. Um, it makes a huge impact when somebody has something that they can count on to eat um, so that they can get this done. I 100% am right there with you. I think when I was in school, I went through a several month phase where I had pancakes for dinner every night because mm -hmm. they were so cheap right they were so cheap and i think where benny's pantry comes in is it really gives students and even faculty and staff that may be struggling an opportunity to go in and get actual nutritious food and then they can use you know especially if they're struggling to to pay rent or pay for gas or pay for tuition you know students they typically can't work a full-time job and then they have the same rent, the same utilities that someone working a full time would have. They have food, tuition, any fees that might come with school. Uh, so it's, you know, it can be really, really difficult for them. Um, do you know a bit about the history of Benny's Pantry, like when it got started? So it was started in 2014. I should know this by heart now, and I don't. It was started in 2014 um, by the wife of one of the presidents here at ISU, who just really felt um, that this was something they were noticing a lot of students sacrifice to make um, to be able to come to school. And in order to continue to come to school, um, students have to eat, they have to be fed. You can only go so long without that before you have to let that dream go. And for some people, that's not a real option either. They're they're not able to make it with the incomes that they have. Um, going to school and, and getting that degree, getting that education is their only hope for, for being able to sustain itself. So. Well, I hope that other universities who don't have pantries listen to this podcast and make moves to start one at their own universities. I think it's a such a revolutionary and needed thing for community colleges, universities, even high schools to, to have. I mean, we have local high schools that have a backpack program that's mm -hmm. similar. Um, so it, I think it's such a needed resource, especially right now with how much inflation is increasing, you know, as inflation increases, tuition does not go down, right? Our tuition yeah. hasn't been cut in half. So it's such a lovely resource for students. And in fact, even now I'm thinking of student workers in our own building that I can approach about Benny's Pantry. If someone wants to make a donation to Benny's Pantry, how would they go about doing so? And what would like your top five needs be? Five needs. So um, there are a couple different ways to go out making a donation. If you want to bring in goods like food items, you can always bring them in during our open hours, and those are listed on our website on isu.edu. Um, they are also listed on our Instagram page, and so if, if we change our hours, you can always find current hours there. You're also welcome to call ahead of time and I can schedule to have students um, bring carts out if you need assistance bringing things into the building. And that number would be 208-282-2794. We could schedule and um, get, get a time when we have extra hands on deck to help us bring things in. Um, if people wanted to make a monetary donation, they can always um, email the pantry at isu.edu, and I would be happy to share instructions for that as well. Um, our top five needs, you know what? Um, I would say um, milk is something that we always need, milk and cheese, but I know those things are hard because they're refrigerated. Um, cereals, lunch meats, um, soups, pastas, 
um, and pot different pasta sauces. You can do a lot of different things with those. Um, those are probably some of our top meats. And then again, high, we can always use hygiene items. They go so fast. Deodorant, shampoo and conditioner, um, bath, like shower gel. A lot of students, especially in the dorms, don't like to carry around a bar of soap. They would appreciate some kind of shower gel that's easier to take back and forth. So those are definitely high on my list. Well, I really appreciate this. We only have a few minutes left. We have about five minutes. So I'd like to give you an opportunity to tell people a little bit. Now, before before we wrap up a little bit, though, I just have one last question. Is Benny's Pantry only in Pocatello? We do have a location in the Meridian and Idaho Falls campuses. Um, their hours and scheduling work different than ours, but they can also be found on our website. Um, and I know the, the Idaho Falls pantry right now is pretty small. It's, um, you have to kind of call, call ahead or come in and let them know that you wanna access it and then they'll go unlock it for you. The Meridian campus is um, starting to grow steadily as well. Um, we're starting to get um, access to food bank food and, and keep more of a variety on the shelves there. So I encourage anybody at the Meridian campus to please go check it out, especially if you've been there before and um, there wasn't much, please go check it out again. Um, our, our pantry uh, coordinator over there, Ali Crane is working very hard to get things up and going there as well. And for those of you who are on the Pocatello campus, Benny's Pantry is located in the Student Union Building on the ISU Pocatello campus in the Games Center area, right next to the craft shop. Now I'm gonna give you an opportunity before we uh, go to just tell us a little bit more about like the, give a little bit more contact information again at the end of this in case someone wants to contact you for donations or to stop in and get uh, some food or hygiene items for themselves or their family. Awesome. So yes, um, we, we want you to come in. We want you to take a look around. Uh, I also like to tell people you're welcome to come in and look around and decide before you before you swipe your card, see if there's things there that you want before you make that decision. Um, so you can come in, we're open for a few hours every weekday, they, they vary. Um, we tried to make it so that students in the morning would have a chance, students in the evenings would have a chance. Um, and again, our phone number is 208-282-2794. That's if you want to call to schedule, um, make any arrangements for bringing food in. If you just have a question for the pantry, they have their own number down there, which is 208-282-4111. Um, so, so you can get a hold of them that way too, if you have questions. Um, and you, go ahead. No, I'm sorry, but you go ahead. And you can find Benny's Pantry by going to isu.edu and just searching at Benny's Pantry. That is spelled B-E-N-N-Y-S. Yes. We also have our Instagram, which our handle is just Benny's Pantry. And then our Facebook is Benny's Pantry ISU. And for those in the community who are not associated with ISU as a student, staff, or faculty, please go down to the Idaho Food Bank that is available for you. It's a really, really wonderful place staffed by extraordinary people. Uh, stay tuned, you will hear from them um, as well this season. We would really love to thank Lisa for being on here to bring some more awareness to Bengals Pantry. Her contribution to the pantry itself is undeniable. It's such a great thing for students to have. So if you have some extra food lying around that you'd like to donate, or if you are a student faculty or staff that is in need of some food uh, regularly or just on occasion, please reach out to them. If you would like to learn more about our offerings at Continuing Education, you can find us at cetrain.isu.edu. And for those of you who like this type of content, sharing, liking, subscribing all help us. Please share this out within the ISU community or even abroad. Please bring this up to your own university if you would like something like this on your campus. And with that, we bid you a farewell. Thank you very much and thank you for watching. Be safe out there.